way that I do these circles is pretty much every two weeks. Um, we have these natural check-in points if you follow the phases of the moon. Every two weeks, you have a time where you could mark on your calendar and align with some universal energies and check in with yourself. Um, two weeks ago, under the full moon, we used that illumination, that full bright moon energy to celebrate successes. If you really think about like dancing in the moonlight, full moon energy is really about the celebration and recognizing your successes, your growth, what's working. And also under the full moon, we use that illumination and that clarity to look at what's not working anymore. Maybe it did at one point, maybe it never has, and you're just seeing it now, but we use the full moon energy to release. Um, whether we burn, we set to see, we put into the water, or we bury things, affirmations, paper, words, um, that's what we use the full moon for. And that burning away or releasing is meant to allow spaciousness to grow as the moon is actually getting smaller from the full moon to the new moon period. Now the moon's getting smaller, but that darkness, that space is growing so that under the new moon or the dark moon tonight and the next few nights, it's really a good time to go inward, to use that darkness of winter of no light in the sky to get quiet and reflect. And then from that period of clarity, we want to set intentions and move forward into what we might want to manifest, basically into the void we've created with releasing at the full moon. So from now on, the moon's just going to get bigger and start to progress towards the next full moon. And in some ways, that kind of ties into the winter solstice tonight. This is the longest night of the year and the shortest day. And it's really a gateway and a portal. Um, in the traditions that I study, we're moving today from the West into the North. The West was a three month period of really deep, dark shadows of water and emotions. Um, if you were feeling a lot of maybe grief or just a lot of things feeling rocky or not understanding why you felt <clears throat> so rocky, some of that may have been just the energy of the West that we've been walking for the past three months. And right now marks this, this gateway into the North. And we're walking into the North, which is the home of the earth, the trees, the mycelium, the plants, and also our ancestors. And this is a really nice transition because if we felt a lot of upheaval recently and we're kind of like thrown by it, as we move into the north, this is where the digestion and the wisdom can come. So the next three month period can really be tuning us into finally receiving all the lessons from the past three cycles, uh, the past year, and really, you know, staying with the darkness as we have been, you know, that really invites in so much self-reflection. But again, moving now from the complete darkness of upheaval into the darkness of the earth. And I always like to um, encourage people to think of darkness or even dark times for yourself as part of life. Um, seedlings cannot sprout under the sun. You know, new life really begins in the dark earth, under the ground in pitch blackness. That is how a seed will actually start to burst open and to grow. And as we're in the winter solstice right now, we're like deep in it. We're deep in the darkness. We are deep underground. And also we're celebrating the return of the sun. Each day from now on, we're gonna have a little more sunlight. So every day is gonna provide just a little bit more illumination until we reach that peak of summer and the summer solstice and the longest day of the year and the shortest night. So we're in a really liminal time right now because we are in the deep dark. We are literally just beginning winter. Technically, this is the first day of winter, um, even if we've been feeling wintry for a while now. But we're also now looking ahead towards the spring planting and to the return of the sun. And so again, if you've been having these like difficult emotional times, this could be a really nice time to really kind of release that and to know that clarity is coming 
it may not be tomorrow. It may not be through journaling tonight, but it is definitely, you know, a shift. This is a large gateway that we are moving through tonight. And again, like a third thing, winter solstice, approaching new year, a new moon. The new moon is moving us into Capricorn season. So for the next month, we're gonna be moving into Capricorn. And this is both the last new moon of this year, calendar year 2022. It's also the first new moon of winter. And Capricorn season is specifically rich with energies that talk about aligning with your personal goals and your career goals. So I've heard that from a few people tonight is, is a lot of thoughts about our work or our profession or our careers. And again, this is a nice time to begin visioning what you wanna bring in in the next quarter um, and in the next year. But there's no push to actually be setting concrete plans and taking action on them right now. This is still way more this dreamy, dark, liminal space of, of visioning. And I feel it in myself really heavy is like this drive to like, oh, well, I got that piece of clarity. So how do I shoot forward with it? And, and trying to rein myself back in a little bit and know that I don't need to take action. It's actually not great to take action this moment. <laughs> the moment that clarity comes, you don't then set off you know, into the starting blocks. And we just want to get clear. We want to give away what doesn't serve us. And as we're getting clarity, we want to shift away from things that interfere with that. This is actually kind of a good time to keep like emptying out your closets, looking through your junk drawers. Um, you know, giving also, spirit of giving is, is really important right now. Um, you know, if you've got clutter in your home, in your spaces, that actually can clutter up your energy, your focus, and your ability to vision. And just in terms of Christmas Yule, you know, what better way to maybe give away some of this junk that's cluttering your life? It might help someone else. Um, so yeah, maybe some cleaning, some clearing out of your space as you're also focusing on this clarity, inviting in clarity and comfort for your inner, inner self as well. Because even in the depths of these darkest nights, and even if you're having like dark nights of the soul a lot, we're still honoring the light and the sun and the spark that we carry inside us. So I know that was a little more spiel than I normally share. Um, and I'm really excited to share a few practices tonight um, with our candles, um, doing a little bit of candle magic, and then moving into our future self meditation, as we aim to really keep connecting with the highest expression of who we are here to be, whether that may be veiled by situational things, by our past, by our current situations, connecting in with the future self every month under the new moon has been really powerful for me. And I know that it's been really powerful for a lot of the people who have been coming to these circles. So we will be doing that as well. Though, again, like I said, I don't encourage you to like really don't push yourself to set your intentions for the new year. Like this week, you, you're really like letting like, um, you know, when you develop a film photograph, and it's floating in the liquid, it's coming clear very slowly. A film photograph doesn't, it's not digital. You don't see it immediately. It's cloudy and it's hidden and hazy and really just allowing that slowness into this season. Um, before we get our candles though, I did wanna to talk to, I'm not wearing this only because it's cute. I love it, but yeah, I, I'm a reindeer tonight, a Christmas Yule reindeer tonight. Um, just because I wanted to touch on that. I did it a few minutes before everyone logged in, but I wanna draw attention to the female reindeer of the world. <laughs> um, you know, our normal Christmas Western society story about Santa and the sleigh and the reindeer. Um, that really, oh, oh, that's pretty. I see the floral candle, that's really nice. 
So Santa's and his sleigh, I know the whole presence thing really came from an older Celtic and pagan tradition where at the winter solstice, again, we are focusing on this return of the sun. And it was the sun that was drawn across the sky in a chariot and the chariot was drawn by female reindeer. Um, I let you guys know, I'm gonna send you a link to this really interesting article all about this. I'm not gonna derail <laughs> our meeting entirely about like anti-patriarchal storytelling. <laughs> but yeah, like the reindeer were here to help usher in this new light and this, you know, return of the sun god of, you know, the move from the deepest dark of winter into the sun. So I just want to give a little honoring to the reindeer, not for delivering our presence, <laughs> but for delivering us the light and the sun. <laughs> so I'd love to open it up for a minute if anyone has any questions or if you have any of your own wisdom to share around the winter solstice as you've experienced it or the new moon in general, as we're kind of moving through this dark night. I just wanted to add something about that, the whole goal setting piece. I, I for many years have started doing it um, on my birthday, which happens to be in April. So it's nice, but I create like a birthday retreat and do it then. And it takes all the pressure of the holidays and the goal setting and separates them. So it's just a nice way to mark that as well. Celebrate, recognize and celebrate all the achievements for the year too. So if that resonates with anyone. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Your birth day can be the birth of your next year. It, you know, we've been really attuned to really unnatural cycles in our production, in our bodies, uh, artificial lights, get up now, go to sleep now, take some drugs. If you can't sleep, all of this stuff is taking us out of, you know, honoring a deeper awareness of cycles. And some of that means also being able to throw away rules that other people try to give you. Even me being like, February is when you should do your, don't listen to me, do it on your birthday. Like, <laughs> You know, I, I really, you know, just I'm trying to present information and tools as I'm receiving it to give other people a toolbox, a kit for you to create your own rituals. So thanks for thanks for speaking to that, Kate. I like that. Hmm. All right. Well, would you guys like to get your candles? Um, you can put them in front of you. If it's not too uncomfortable, you might want to hold it in front of you, you know, in front of your heart or just have it in front of you in your space. Actually going to sprinkle some of the cedar ashes that we just, I made when I opened the circle onto mine. Mm -hmm. And slowing your breathing down now. Just consciously taking some slower inhales and exhales. You might want to close your eyes for a moment if you need to really feel into your body here in the space that you're in and in the shared space that we're creating across time and geographical space. Feeling the weight of your hips and your legs pressing into your seat or your floor. And calling with intention your mental, emotional, etheric, and energetic bodies now to your physical body here.
Taking a moment now in this stillness to take another breath in gratitude for yourself for this moment that you've chosen to give to yourself. Giving some gratitude and thanks for all you may have walked through this year. Tuning in now for a moment to your heart space. Imagining as you breathe in and out that this air is flowing in and out through the heart. Breathing in through the back of the heart and out through the front. And as you breathe through your heart space, imagine this breath is flickering past a small flame. Like a pilot light in your heart, this flame is always there. With your breath and your intention, you're feeding this flame with oxygen, with life, your own breath. And bringing your candle to your heart space now. You're beginning to tune your candle into the energy that resonates from your heart. There's actually a measurable electromagnetic field emanating from your heart a dozen times stronger than the one from your brain. And placing this candle here is actually helping infuse it with the light and energy of your own heart space. And from this flame in your heart, cast your awareness out to the great central sun Imagine the endless flame of fire burning in all dimensions, across all space and time. The light reaching galaxies we don't even know about yet. And connecting this great central sun with the flame in your heart space. We honor that the light within is the same as the light without. And we give thanks to this light within. Damos gracias a la luz interior. And now if you'd like to light your flame, light your candle, One more little light in the dark, this dark night, this flame connecting from your heart space through this candle flame to the central sun out in all directions, touching the flames now burning in each one of our houses in our hands. You might use this candle for the next couple of weeks. Every time you light it, you may think about the intentions you want to set. You may think about the flame representing the flame in your heart. 
representing the flame in the sky. And if you feel comfortable now, we'll move into our meditation. Probably want to put the candles down somewhere safe. And you're welcome now to get cozy in a nest. You can turn off lights. You don't have to see the screen. Getting your body ready in whatever way feels good to you to be able to relax fully. You might need to lie down, get a pillow for your head. And as you're making yourself comfortable, tuning into your body now, what does your body want to be most comfortable? Do you need another blanket? Do you need your kitty cat with you? You need another pillow under your knees or under your lower back. Closing your eyes. So you let your body know, let your mind know there's nowhere else to be right now. There's nothing you need to do. The next time you breathe in, send that air into your belly, into your lower back, as though you're filling a large balloon. Repeating this deep belly breath a few more times. And each time you breathe out, allow your body to relax a little further into your surface. beginning to cast your imagination out now. Imagine yourself facing a forest of beautiful trees rising up before you and stretching endless into the horizon. This forest is dense and dark but also safe and peaceful, filled with tall trees, low shrubs, plants growing on the earth, mushrooms and their mycelial network line the paths and the roots twine deep beneath you. And you may imagine yourself holding your candle here and beginning to walk into this forest. Finding a path between the trees, walking in under the protective arch of the branches above 
soft moss and grass beneath your feet. And you continue carrying your candle, walking through the forest, feeling each step beneath you, feeling the breeze caress your skin, maybe letting your fingers trail along the plants and the bark as you pass. And as you walk deeper into the woods, your candle lighting your path, you'll come across a clearing. At the center of this clearing in the woods, you find a deep, dark pool of water. As you approach this spring, this dark pool, look for a place on the edge of the water that feels good to you. You may set your candle down if you wish as you settle yourself next to the waters. And begin to call forth your future self. Invite your future self to come meet you here now. And perhaps your future self will begin to appear through the trees coming closer. What does your future self look like? What are they wearing? How does your future self feel in their body? And as your future self comes closer, they sit down with you to commune with you now. Ask your future self, what would you like me to know right now? Ask your future self, what do I need to do right now?
ask your future self if they have any other messages for you at this time. Your future self has a gift for you now, perhaps wrapped up or in a box. You may take this gift from your future self and open it. Your future self has a final gift for you now. And they extend a golden cord from their heart to your heart. This cord is always connected, drawing you into your future self, step by step, breath by breath. And as your future self gets up to leave, give thanks to anything they may have shared with you tonight. And even as they disappear or walk away, remembering that golden cord is always connected, always communicating with you. And gathering yourself in the clearing by the pool. Begin to walk back the way you came. Back into the woods. Past the plants and the trees. Taking with you this golden light each step as you return to your place in this room. Coming back through the trees. Deepening your breath now as you return to the space, returning to your body on the floor. Drawing your awareness back into the room Maybe placing a hand on your heart and a hand on your belly.
giving thanks for any clarity or information you may have received. Connecting back with the light within. And again, in your own time, continuing to come back a little further, maybe beginning to wiggle your fingers and toes, noticing the temperature of the air in the room. Slowly, slowly coming back. Maybe turning the head from side to side. When you're ready, you might flutter your eyes open and stretch. I'm going to give you about five, eight minutes to come back. You might want to journal or write down any messages you received. <laughs> 